Good morning, everybody. My name is Dara Kelly, and I work in the advisory team at Grant Thornton. I hope everyone's doing well this morning. It's been a, an exceptional couple of weeks, and um, we thought a very useful topic to cover for people in business is, is how they're managing their working capital. Um, it's, it's, it's really going to be critical. Um, over the over the short to medium term and and I suppose it's the uncertainty around how long people need to 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 take exceptional steps is is a struggle and we're you know we're hearing that over the past um especially over the past number of days where 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 people are uncertain as to how long the current climate will will continue so what I wanted to cover today is a couple of principles a couple of practical points as to what you can do immediately and then some some little bit of detail on the individual components of working capital and what you could what you could do to try and manage as best you can um, your working capital position and working capital is broken into four points um, we've got cash we've got our cash tied up in stock we've got cash tied up in people that owe us money and then we owe people money and really the 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 the, the the overriding principle is to keep as 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 much of our own cash out of receivables and out of inventory and in cash in hard cash and then to take as much advantage as we can of credit uh, from various other sources that are available therefore giving us as much cash which will give us the ability to ride out the bumps in the road and again, we don't know how long. And that, I think that's a key thing because people are used of managing their working capital through seasonal cycles. But this is exceptional. We don't, and, we, and, and we don't know how long. So five things we can, you know, five points I put on the, on, on the first slide is number one, communication. Um, you need to be talking to your banks. Um, they like we are in a good position on our banks. They're very well capitalized. They have significant buffers. That's all you know. A build up over the last ten years from the last financial crisis. But they are in they are in very good capital positions. So they can be flexible and will and will be flexible and will have to be flexible. So get the communication out. Um, open lines of communication. Explain where you are. Um, explain some concerns you have coming up in the next couple of months. Also talk to other key stakeholders, such as the revenue. It's been well spoken about that the revenue will offer uh, good support to SMEs. Um, make your filings on time, but you do not need to make the payments. Now, everyone needs to be taking advantage of that. Next, you need to talk to your you know, key clients, um, key suppliers, uh, and, and other creditors that you'd have, and get the lines of communication open. Secondly, review all your contractual positions. You need to do a full top to bottom on where you are on everything, including headroom you have on your lenders and some what would be constitute events of default. Again, circular reference back to my first point, I think banks are gonna be very, very flexible. But look at other um, key documents you would have, such as key supplier contracts, key customer contracts. And, and, and it's always a good idea just to, to, to go back and look at where you are in your insurance cover across your business. Because we might have instances now where that could be called. And, you know, um, there was some, you know, there's some coverage in the media around business interruption. And do people have the cover they thought they had? So, again, a full review of where you are contractually. Number three, there is immediate steps you can take. I'll come to that in the next slide. But there is, number four, the fourth point is to consider how you can um, apply for the various, say, finance packages or for working capital that you could use. So there is, there is a number of packages there. I've, I've listed a couple. Um, I would recommend that people be talking. First of all, you talk to your own bank about them. And should you be, um, how you would fit in, what's the best one for you to apply through. And then I would be starting to push through those applications, even if you don't immediately feel you need it. It's back to the point, we don't know how long we're planning for. So there's no harm to have those credit facilities available. And then the fifth point is um, to look at the, 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 the various supports and wage um, subsidy packages that have just been and uh, came out yesterday evening and how they may be suitable to you managing your 
workforce and, and the cost of maintaining them and how you might need to um, make adjustments or flex your workforce based on the, the level of business that's coming through. And there's a very strong wage subsidiary package came out last night. And I would, you know, everyone needs to be looking at the, how they could take advantage of that. So just going into the next slide, which is our some some just to get into the nitty gritty. And I would recommend everyone should be putting together, you know, a six to eight week cash flow and detail, 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 every single supplier every single um customer that owes money you need to be looking at this in the detail need to be looking at the level of um of stock that you're holding so just to go through we've broken this down into into the specifics so if we look at our receivables um people should be reviewing this list on a daily basis but like there is you know there is there is the simple request of picking up this is back to the communication point pick up the phone and ask for quicker payments from 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 your your customers and your key customers obviously you should always be focusing on out of credit terms but i think something that might um that might assist businesses is if you maybe offer early payment discounts this is just all about speeding up the cash coming into your business you know, the, the offering discounts like that need to be considered in the context of profitability. We don't want to be offering discounts and, and making a lot of P&L losses, but we do need to focus on any way of getting cash in. So early, early payment discounts should be looked at. If you have contractual ability to enforce late payments, do accrue those. Do put those on the accounts. They mightn't com convert to cash immediately, but that might become something you can talk about next month. Make sure that you're invoicing as quick as possible, as quick as contractually possible, and then frequent monitoring of your receivables. It's probably the number one point to focus on is getting cash in for sales that you've already made before uh, what's happened the last couple of weeks events. In relation to, to stock or inventory, we just need to keep this as low as possible. This is real money tied up until we get it back out the door. So r really look very closely at the levels you're ordering. Like it's a bit of a trade-off where you might, you might get discounts for bulk buying, but then we got to weigh that up as to other cash inflows and outflows. Again, over this six to eight week cash flow. So everyone should be preparing one of those. Um, and then look at some stock. And if some stock isn't moving and there's an ability to drop um, the retail price or wholesale price to get that out the door and it's not you know it's not core stock take advantage of that again that'll be cash back into into your working capital system in relation to creditors you need to you, you need to really do a list of priority um, because um, there will be some tough decisions made around cash flows and you need to focus on your critical creditors. But again, talking to them, telling them they are critical to you, but ask for some, um, ask for some extensions on credit. Like contractual agreements are there now, but they're, they're always open for discussion. So asking for some, um, for some extra credit from critical suppliers is, is, is never going to do any harm. Um, then there's the basics, like you need to make sure you're on top of what direct debits you've set up. You know, if you're, um, if you're, um, if you have some like standing orders, review all of those. If you're making payments for an annual charge in one, in one payment, and that's set up for you recurring, go back and look at that and see if that can be broken up into monthly payments. Um, and then obviously on the revenue, um, I've spoken about that, take advantage of that, make your filings, um, but you can defer the payment under certain circumstances for SMEs is quite broad. And you're gonna have to avoid um, any non-critical payments such as um, look to defer any pension payments or any non-essential um, any non-essential payments going out. So it's a full review uh, top down then on the on, on the on the harder assets, obviously, if you have lease financing in place, that's good. If you don't and you you own some assets, again, talk to your bank about potentially putting some lease, uh, you know, lease financing on those assets to that would free up cash flow. And any non-core assets, it's a, an exceptional 
you know, environment we're in, whether it's possible to, to readily sell non-core assets is questionable, but again, look at it, uh, look at it as an option. And then on the facilities, which is debt facilities side, I did touch on that um, at, the, at the start, but again, it's about looking at all the facilities, what can we, you know, what can we extend? What further facilities can we, uh, do we have that we can draw down? And then anything that's non-essential, um, such as maybe there's some uh, equipment that's non-essential, look to cancel those leases uh, if they're not being used in the business. So it's really down to the detail, get your weekly cash flow set up, and then it's constant review. And the number one goal is just preserve as much cash in the bank account as possible um, and taking advantage of all the supports that are there. So I know I've gone through that quite quickly. Happy to take any call, uh, uh, questions at the end or to follow up with anybody after the session.